What's up guys, Nightingale here, and welcome to Intermediate Traveler's Guide video number one, Beyond Wyvern. First off, I just wanna say thank you so much for all the support here on YouTube. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much for the support you've given the Beginner's Handbook. Your comments are amazing. I'm so glad that it's helping you out. It's helping you progress easier, faster, showing you things you may or may not have known. It really does mean a lot to me, so thank you so much for all the support. It really does mean a lot, and I hope that this series will help you just as much. Now, next, if this is your first time clicking on one of my videos and you're a new player, you're in the wrong spot. This is not going to be for you. I'm going to leave the I'm going to leave a link down in the description below to the beginner's handbook and that should help you out a lot more than this video. Now, here's the thing. You're welcome to hang out for the rest of the video. Maybe you'll learn something, maybe you'll be a little confused when you're ending. But to say this, at least at least watch Wyvern and Why and then this video will probably make a lot more sense to you after that. So, with that being said, let's move on to the actual video. So, as the title says, Beyond Wyvern. That's right, we're going to talk about the hunts and when you should move on and why you should be moving on and kind of where, where your milestones should be. So, let's say this. Let's call this the prerequisite here. So, I'm going to assume you have a tier 3 pet. A 3 star pet. Alright? So, it can repeat 15 times. Now, for most of you, if I would like to see around a 70% success rate to 80% because in this way I know your gear quality is a little bit better than normal for Wyvern and it means you're able to farm it pretty efficiently at this point. So let's look for around a 70% success rate or just to kind of make it easier for you, if, you're, if you have 15 runs total, technically 16 because it's the first run plus 15, I would like to see you at least doing somewhere between 10 and 12 successful runs out of your 16. So if you're a little less than that, then you're probably not ready for moving on past Wyvern. Now, the next kind of like prerequisite is, do you have the units to do this? Because now the hunts that we're going to start talking about is going to start branching out. Now, we're going to kind of cover some teams or just more of how I've been approaching it. Because again, this is just more my perspective on it. Um, this may be unit locked for some of you, especially if you've started with the Beginner's Handbook or around the release of Beginner's Handbook. Some of these units may have already come and gone and you didn't have a chance to pull on them. Key ones being like Tamarin, Lilius, the Guilty Gear units, things like that. Now, can you make other things work? Absolutely. It's all going to come down to how does your luck happen with the five star tickets, the four star tickets, your random daily pulls, things like that. So, we're just going to assume you can probably have the units to do this. Then the final prerequisite is, is your gear quality good enough with new gear you've made that your Wyvern team isn't being hurt and you're not taking the gear off them to come farm here. All right? So let's jump into the hunts and we're going to talk about them. Now, we're going to give you a quick overview. We're not going to talk about Wyvern. That's been talked about extensively in Wyvern and Y. We'll start with Gollum, and all we're going to really talk about for right now, we'll come back to Gollum later. Gollum is going to be more considered, let's say, a touch-up piece for you right now, in the beginning. So, if you're not ready for these other hunts, you might need to come into Gollum and grab maybe, maybe it is an HP piece that's kind of bad on your soul weaver or your tank or maybe you have an attack set that you're trying to use and maybe a piece is bad come here try to get it fixed up get get a few good quality good quality pieces out of it and see if that fixes your issue and then you can move on we'll come back and again we'll go over the set later but i just want to say that now if you haven't if your gear quality isn't quite there maybe it's in Gollum that might be fixing or maybe it is a wyvern piece i don't really know i know for me with my cigarette it was a couple Gollum pieces fixed everything now she hits like an absolute nuke so the first one we're going to talk about is azvanek because it's the easier hunt to talk about why because there's only three sets so it's a lot less we have to go over so azvanek has the unity set dual attack chance immunity immune to debuffs turn one and Rage, increased 30% damage to a debuff target. So, why are we coming to Asmanac? Well, the big, big attraction here is actually immunity gear. Most of you are probably getting around the 90-day 
mark, you know, probably 60, 90 days, and you're starting to feel a little comfortable, maybe even a little cocky thinking, I've got this, you know? When you're in that, you go, I got this, but man, I so did not have it. And you're ready to start taking on the PVP world. Maybe you just wanna start making the next step towards your climb in arena. Maybe you're wanting to try to get the gold one. Go go to master five. Your, 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 your benchmark's not gold one, it's master five. Your gold five, master five. Gold five, master five. Gold one doesn't exist. Gold five, master five. That's your climb. Um, you'll thank me later. So, maybe you're wanting to make that climb. So, maybe you want to work on some immunity sets. Maybe you're tired of getting debuffed turn one. Maybe your units are just a little too slow and you just can't get them out in front and you happen to have all the stats you need and you just need the immunity debuff. It's a good place to come. Maybe you're wanting to improve your cigarette or a big nuke or maybe you're even wanting to start thinking about the process of one shot teams that's not something we're going to cover here or in this series like extensively but maybe this is where you're wanting to start why because of the rage set the rage set is definitely important for one shot teams cigarette uses it biking can use it um watch your shuri can use it you can use it on her valen you fiend um even um, who's the other one that was told? That was to I was told. Uh, I believe that was it. Actually, I think that is it for the one shots. Um, and well, immunity. Nobody's gonna care about unity. You're probably just gonna break it down. Sure, you could probably make it work and surprise some people, but chances are it's not something you really want to focus in on. So, when you're wanting to come here, you're probably mostly here f for the immunity sets. So the team that I'm using isn't really the best team, but it works for me and what I have on my account. And that's something that I want you to start thinking about. What works for you? Now, in my case, I happen to have Lilius. She was my better built knight. She was also had just better stats overall than my Roz. So she was also the first one I 60 over Roz. Um, she's my Arius holder. And she's also pretty good for this because of the dual attack chance off of her skill one. Tamarin doing Tamarin things. Still the same scuff Tamarin build you've seen in all my other videos. Spectre Tenebria is just using my normal build. The only thing I change out is Leela Violin. Instead of her, you know, I normally use Book on her, I'll change it out to Violin so that she can strip the buff. So you have an unhappy face, which is the rage buff, and then the super angry face, which is the berserk buff. You're trying to strip the buffs off before it happens, before he, you get attacked, because it hurts when those buffs go up, or when you get attacked when those buffs are up. So, and also with her poison, it does help out a good bit. Not gonna lie, the extra, you know, damage does help. And then my, I'm using Arbiter Vildred, one, because he's, well, Arbiter Vildred, two, it works out pretty darn well. I put Daydream Joker on here when I'm actually gonna farm for a longer period of time. If not, I just leave his Alexa Basket on and we get to use the Sacred Art of Gab. It's pretty effective when it goes off, but it's nowhere near what Daydream Joker would actually do. So, in the case you don't have these units, well, I'm not. you basically want to be bringing a mage that can utilize the, um, in this case, I'm using Leela to strip the buff. So you'd probably want to bring a mage that can utilize it. Um, there are some non-dispellable buffs. You have to kill the adds. So that's where somebody like Arbiter Vildred or Green Vildred work out really, really well. Now, as chat likes to rub in my face daily, there's a green unit that exists that does a lot of different jobs in a lot of different places. Kind of rhymes with candy. And unless she looks like what is something on here on, on screen, I don't have her. That's right, Landy. And um, they'd like to use, say, oh yeah, just use Landy. Oh yeah, I beat this with Landy. Oh, I did this with Landy. Hmm. And I normally now can cut him to the punch and go, Really? Let me guess. You beat it with Landy. And they're like, how'd you know? And I'm like, I don't know. It's only like every uh, five minutes you bring up Landy. So if you have Landy, congratulations. You've got a great damage dealer here. Daydream Joker, Landy, go. Lots of damage. Um, but in this case, I use Arbiter Vildred, and it's a pretty successful, you know, raid. I'd probably say I'm probably somewhere around 68, 69, maybe 75% success rate. Maybe it is, I, I don't watch a lot of my runs here because they do take a lot longer. Like I'm looking at around five, seven minute runs versus my Wyvern runs, which are like two minutes. 
two and a half minutes maybe. I haven't really timed my wyvern run, but I know they're sign these runs are significantly longer. So I typically just set up 20 repeats, walk away, come back in you know, about an hour and see if it's still running or if they're done. I'd, I don't really maintain this one quite as well as if I'm watching wyvern, which I know every about 40 minutes I need to be in there on top of it. So I typically just come back and I've got stuff. When I know I'm failing is when um, Spectre Tenebra isn't on uh, violin and she's probably still sitting on her book and I've only got like three or four complete. So that's the team I use. Maybe you might be able to get away with Roz, Green Vildred if you've got it. You're definitely going to need a Soul Weaver to be able to, um, to dispel and as well as heal because this is not a fight you can just DPS your way through and without one-shotting it, there's no way. So that's the team I use here. Let's go talk about uh, Banshee now. Now, I'm going to be 100% honest with you. Straight honest right here. I haven't farmed this. Ever. Now, I've completed it, but I have not farmed this. Why? Because I'm too stubborn, and she's a pain in the butt to actually do. Now, here's the thing. Chuck on a few green or blue units, and you can probably go have fun and actually farm this. I'm too lazy, so I'm working on the one shot for this. Full disclosure. I'm very close, but that's you'll see why in a minute. So here are the sets, and here's why you'd kind of want to be using them. So there's a resist set, the destruction set, lifesteal set, and counter set. Can you bet, or can you guess how many of these are PvP sets? Correct. If you said three of them are PvP sets, you are absolutely right. Well, you can actually use all four of them, but three of them definitely specialize for more towards PvP content. So the counter set will allow you to have a chance to counter back. I fought a Destina yesterday who had a counter set on her. You want to know that 20% chance was 100% of the time. I think she only missed one counter. It was a long fight. I won though. Good stuff. The lifesteal set. A lot of units can actually take good advantage of the lifesteal set, and typically they're high damage dealing units. Something you want to look for is potentially like if you don't have a Sigurd Scythe on your Ravi, lifesteal actually would work pretty well. Is it as efficient as Sigurd? No, but it will definitely do the job. A unit that just came out, Seaside Bologna, is out right now. You could put her on lifesteal set. Um, you can also put ML Kin on it. Again, another Sigurd Scythe user if you don't have it. It works out just fine there as well. Tempest Surin is another meta unit that a lot of people will put lifesteal on. So think about it as somebody, if they can do a lot of damage and you want to steal the damage back when they attack, think about that set for them. So it typically has its use more for PvP. The Destruction Set. Who doesn't like seeing 350 crit damage? Y you need to leave the video. That's, that's not cool. We all want to see the big numbers. Yes, the destruction set is definitely the big damage number. The issue here is you do need to roll it pretty darn well to make up the other stats. Sure, you'll have the maximum crit damage. And sure, there are units in the game that don't necessarily need the other stats. They just need the crit damage stat. So it makes it a lot more useful to them. Typically, these are going to be used on big, big, big hitters. Because, well, that's typically where the big damage is at. And then, the resist set. The meme of the four. Now... I've seen some Soul Weavers decked out in full resist that's quite scary and quite nauseating to look at almost 300 effect resistance. It's gross. But I actually see some value in this and I'm looking forward to this later on because I have a couple things I'm looking at for Soul Weavers that might actually work just to put a two set on. I don't necessarily want a six set unless I just farm up the perfect rolls on it. Then okay, I'll memeishly put that on somebody. I'm all for it. But I've got a couple ideas, and I'm going to be looking to see just kind of what shows up over time when I start farming Banshee. So as far as my team and why I say I haven't been farming it, well, here you go. Well, you're missing a unit. No, actually, I'm not. I'm setting up for the Banshee one-shot. As I said, we're not going to really cover the one-shot here, but I will just basically say that I'm close. I can almost do it. I've been able to do it with Tyria and... Um, Iseria manually, but I have not been able to auto it. It takes a pretty decent gear ceiling to get in to do this. 
I'm actually using the Nick Seed set on Biken, but I think that also might be my crutch, is that it does have some negative stats in it that might be just holding me back. So maybe I have to sit down one day and just actually farm it out. So what would you be looking at to farm this out? Well, here's a trick. If you come down here to statistics and you check out what other people are using, you'll see that some people are using Shadow Rose. Now, I don't have her. I also don't have Charles. I also don't have Landy. I don't have Vildred. I do have Green Bologna. But there's not many knights because most people go in and just swing full damage on her. Or most people at this point are trying to one-shot her. So what I would recommend is more go into like Vivian's teams. And you can see Shadow Rose, Shadow Rose, Shadow Rose. And there's no knights. Why? You don't really need them. You could do Ilyanov. You could. Just take a fourth damage dealer and put bulldoze your way through it. Honestly, if I was to really need to farm this, that's exactly what I would do. I might even put Falconer Cleary on if I really feel like I need an Arius or an Adamanth. Um, but I'm so close. I'm so close to the one shot that I'm just going to wait till then. I'm not really in dire need of these sets. While, yes, I would love to get Ravi on a Lifesteal or a counter set, start working on some counter sets for a couple other units that I have in mind. Um, it's just not really there for me yet. So, to wrap up the video, I do want to bring up the other two hunts really quick that we haven't really talked about in depth. First off, we're going to talk about Katie's. This is why I said earlier that Katie's kind of needs to be pushed away for a while because I think this is a little too niche and a little too advanced for where we are at in, in this progression. Yes, I'm classifying myself here. I wouldn't call myself an advanced player even though you may be a new player and you're going, oh my gosh, you're so advanced, you've got everything. No, 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 no. We're talking a lot farther down the road before I even consider this. Now, Katie's just recently got a buff here, I think in the last major patch. And we'll go over and look at that in a minute. But the sets that are dropped here are Revenge, Injury, and Penetration. So, we're going to jump over there and then we're going to come back to, um, to Gollum real quick. So, just so I read these off correctly because they changed how everything's worded, I want to make sure I read this off cleanly to you. So, Revenge sets increase speed. The speed increases by 12% for every 1% of health lost. Okay. Speed increases by an additional 0.05%. So, as the target, as the hero loses HP, they speed up. There's a few instances where this can be very, very interesting. And this is typically somebody who can survive a long time. So these are, think about that. Something that can survive a while can speed up and get faster and faster and faster. There's a couple things I'm thinking of, but I'm going to wait a while. I, I don't even want to invest into the team to even try to farm this yet. That's where I'm at. Injury, after ta after attacking, decreases the target's health by up to 6%, effective against heroes, only heroes, so this doesn't work in PvE, unfortunately, and it can stack up to 50%, so you can reduce up to 50% of their HP. While this is pretty cool, it's just not practical enough. Sure, it's nice to surprise somebody and start chipping away their health permanently, that's basically what this is doing. But chances are, the person wearing this can probably get deleted. If you have your gear quality better than theirs. Now, penetration sounds pretty interesting with the recent buff. When attacking with a single target, or with a single attack, penetrates the target's defense by 15%, and it does not stack with the same effect name. So it's none like the HP set, where you can stack multiple HP sets. This, you can only have the two sets. To keep it fair, because at 45% defense, that's kind of nasty. Just saying. So, why I say Katie's is a little bit away is... I I don't think the progression, you should be worrying about stuff like this. Because this is so niche, you won't be able to use this everywhere. This is literally, you're thinking, RTA type plays. So, on my way back to talk about Gollum, uh, my... Uh, the, the video crashed. So... We're here to finish up and talk quickly about Gollum. So, real quick, as we mentioned in the beginning of the video, Gollum is more going to be a touch-up piece. Now, that being said, there are a few units in the game that you may want to consider full attack set on, just because of how the new buff is. It's 45% attack. That's a lot of extra attack. 
couple units I'm thinking of. One off the top of my head, the one I'm really interested in for this, is Sermia. I would like to see a 5,000 attack Sermia with like near max crit damage and crit chance. I, I think it can happen. It's going to take a lot of high-end rolled gear. But for why not for the memes? Let's see if it can happen someday. HP, I would also like to work on maybe making a full Soul Weaver in a triple HP set 90 Why? Because. Why not? As well as get a couple defense pieces farmed up for things. Maybe like maybe I decide to do that with Fighter Maya. Maybe I want to change some things that don't necessarily need immunity because it's already baked into their kit and put some defense on them or put some HP on them. Um, maybe I want to do... Maybe someday I want to get crazy and do some KD stuff with maybe HP. Maybe I want to do... Um, some speed with HP. Maybe I want to do some destruction with defense. It depends on what what's around and what do I see and how do I see it needing to be built. So, do Golem sparingly. Um, my team, I don't have a team set up, but I think the team that I was using to farm this was... I think I was using Adventurer Roz. I think I was using Vivian, Tamarin, and I want to say it was Cirilla was, the, was my damage dealer. And it was probably like a 70% success rate with like stealing like... It's putting Cirilla maybe on, like, Sigrid's gear, I think is what I was doing. Um, maybe I was using her own gear. I'm not actually 100% sure how I last did it. It's been a while since I did a Golem run, but uh, I'm definitely going to try it out again, uh, this hunt buff. So, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one.